Uh, let's talk about Mark Emmert. Okay. Mark Emmert. He said on Friday that this is the right time to consider decentralized, deregulated college sports. He thinks that it is time for the NCAA uh, to back off and let the conferences handle their business. Let them be the ones to actually um, to, you know, handle the rules enforcement and things like that. He says, uh, when you have an environment like that, it just forces us to think more about what constraints should be put in place ever on college athletes, Embert said, and it should be the bare minimum. Now, what he's saying is not incorrect. The thing that shocked me about this is the fact that it is Mark Emmert, the president of the NCAA, who is saying it, basically saying that, hey, you actually don't need us. Like, we, what we've been doing forever is a complete sham, and now that we've got, like, this NIL and it, everything's open, you don't really need us. It is funny that he is saying this just, like, a month after his new contract extension, right? But I, it's not, like, he's saying exactly what we want him to say. He's saying the exact right thing. It's just the fact that he's the one that's saying it that is so mind blowing to me. I don't get what his end game is here. Do you have, like? I don't. People have said online like oh, he just doesn't want to do any of the work, or he he doesn't he wants to quit. Like he wants to stop doing it now. That's part of it. The other part is like that Austin case. What the Supreme Court said was basically. If the NCAA tries to restrict anything, you just come see us. Like, we will handle it. We will get rid of this bunch. So, basically, Emmert's there to handle, like, the NCAA tournament contract, I guess, the TV contract, and maybe that's about it. Like, what, what, what is the next step? What, give me your thoughts on this. This guy has done nothing but give his job away to other people. Yes, to, forever. To, for, the last, for the last year and a half, <laughs> all he's done is, is Congress, do my job. Conferences, do my job. But but all I want to know is when the hell you send him back to 2.5 mil, okay? Because you're that taking the 2.5 mil and you're not doing a goddamn thing for it. <laughs> this piece of shit right here has got to be the most worthless human being on the planet. Yes, he needs to get – we said it last week, Gary. We said it last week, and it's the first time we've oh, – you and I have talked about this privately. We've never publicly stated it before ever. Last week is the first time we kind of had the balls to say in 10 years – we don't think the NCAA will be a thing anymore. Yes. And I I will be damned if it was less than a week, less than a week, and this guy is giving away another part of his job and the NCAA's responsibility. Dude, it might not last. Listen, Adam, I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that because that gets political and they're not necessarily my political views, but I find them funny. The, there have been people that have predicted things would change in our country. And, and they were like, in 50 years, we're going to look like this. And like six years later, we look exactly like you could read the book and be like, holy shit, we're there right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. But, what, I thought 10 years, 10 years might be four years too long. It might be like six or seven years too long. Like we, yeah. we could yeah, be no, looking yeah. at this. This, this could be happening quick. Like Mark Emmert really might be so bad at his job that he's the last NCAA president we ever have. It's entirely possible. Because when he's done, the NCAA will crumble around him in ruins, which I'll praise that day. I will I will dance in the street and sing hymns to the football gods for that because he's worthless. Yes. Here's, here's what the article says. Uh, Emmert said the NCAA is more than 1,100 member schools should consider a less homogenous approach to the way sports are governed and reexamine the current three-division structure, which includes 355 Division I colleges. The NCAA's rules and regulations have long been criticized and court challenges have been mounting in recent years. His quote here, we need to be ready to say, yeah, you know, for field hockey, field hockey is different than football. Wrestling is different than lacrosse and not get so hung up on having everything be the same, said Emmert, who was the president of LSU and at the University of Washington before taking the NCAA job in 2010. Uh, sports serve different functions at different schools, Emmert said, and the NCAA needs to govern in a way that is more reflective of that. He added the NCAA should not shy away from the fact that a small percentage of athletes are using college sports as a path to professional sports. We need to embrace it. 
And with NIL out there, we're providing other opportunities around this whole notion of using college sports as a career launching pad. It, this is all 100% right. Like, he's, yeah. he's saying exactly what is supposed to be said here. But my God, like, it, I, I'm curious what the NCAA board thinks about what he said. Like, I, I can't imagine that they are comfortable with, with the power being just, like, gone and handed to the conferences. Like, I can't so, imagine now, now, look, So let's get into the nuts and bolts of if and when that ever happens, what does that look like? Um, that's going to look like chaos. Because you're gonna have yeah. you're gonna have the Big Twelve saying we won't allow transfers, and everybody else saying we're gonna allow transfers, and so you're gonna have certain conferences restricting people because it benefits or hurts their big boy schools. Yeah. And 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 the SEC is no different. The the Big Ten's no different. Pac-12 is no different. The Americans no different. The ACC is no different. Whoever the big dogs are at the time. They are going to put rules in place to protect them, which means the separation between them and everyone else will just get larger and larger and larger because they can't afford to not have a dominant team every year. Yeah. yeah that's right. what's gonna that's what's going to happen is every conference is gonna say who's the biggest school we got, who's our best chance at winning a football championship. And then they're going to manipulate the rules, i.e. Big Ten last year, suck it. And they're going to change <laughs> things that benefits them because they can't afford for that team to miss out on the payday that brings to the Big Ten. So the separation from that team and everybody else is just going to get larger and larger and larger. So the same team is going to win the conference every year. But – the conference is going to bring in so much money. Those other teams are just fine playing for second. And that'll be the bragging rights. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. That's what's going to happen. No, you're, if you're you right. If you allow this. Right. It, it's so, it's so strange to me to see this, like it, it's going to be weird. I'll just, I'll, I'll say that because I can't, I can't quite gather everything into one succinct statement on this. But this coming out on Friday was really intriguing to me because I think it speeds up the process. I think it, it speeds up oh, everything. Well, yeah. So so if NIL is here, the biggest thing NCAA does is, is um, investigate, like, these types of infractions, right? Yeah. Like that has to be the majority of their job. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, so now because of NIL, like the biggest part of their job is completely taken away from them. Yes. Why do we need them? Why, why do we have hundreds of people working for this organization? It's probably handsomely paid too. I'm going to bet very few of those folks making 35 grand a year. All right. No, you're 100 right. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a bit. They're, they're making money. Large salaries. Now, Mark is the only guy that's probably 2.5. All right, he's picking up dinner every time they go out. But he, I, I assure you that the the folks under him are are handsomely paid. Yes. Yes. Very well right. compensated. I think you're right. Um, his his last quote was, "We can learn, or we can lean back and do nothing, and then just wait and see what happens." Or you can say, "Look, we're in it. This is the new era." We need to take advantage of it, pivot as much as we can towards the areas that I was just talking about, and embrace that change rather than fighting it. I mean, I, I will go ahead and give him kudos. Kudos for saying the things that, that you should be saying and not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes anymore. Like, I, I'm glad that he did this, but whew, how different. How different uh, the, the tides have turned in a big way in just, you know, two, three weeks. It is crazy thanks for listening to the winning cures everything podcast the website is winning cures everything.com and if you want to connect with us we're on twitter at gary wce at chris b giannini at winning cures or you can email us gary at winning cures everything.com or chris at winning cures everything.com subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe and we'll see you soon